director of Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess, Mr. A.G. Ayanuma. Well, as I said um, last year at E3, I was introduced as the producer of this title, and uh, over the course of the year, we've we've worked obviously on on development. And then I took it to Mr. Miyamoto, and I showed him what we had come up with. And of course, Mr. Miyamoto, in typical Mr. Miyamoto fashion, took the tea table and tipped it over us. Um, so, as my job, or Mr. Miyamoto's job, of course, then is to put the tea table back in order. And in doing so, it's more of a hands-on director um, content job. So that's pretty much what he's doing now. Uh, what then would Mr. Miyamoto's role be in this game? <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Miyamoto's job is to uh, to clean up together, to help Mr. Uh, Aonuma put the tea table back in order. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a very enjoyable job. He's having a great time doing it. Does that mean Mr. Miyamoto that you'll be going back into the development studio and, and back with the team to actually work on game development yourself? Yes, um, and actually helping out with with some of the producer tasks that Mr. Aonuma is unable to get to during the schedule. Um, some of the feedback we've seen to the Wind Waker, uh, how Mr. Aonuma feels about uh, user response to it, and then also how he has moved into the direction of the new, more realistic graphics with Twilight Princess. Well, of course, you know, with the Wind Waker, there were the, the graphic style that we, we took with Wind Waker, uh, there were pretty much a, a even split of people who liked it or disliked it. Um, now, what we did is we listened to that feedback and um, we, we made adjustments, you know, to our thinking, but incorporating that with the feedback we got on Wind Waker um, and based on the fact that we wanted to show this time a more adult link, um, we went ahead and decided that we thought that the realistic graphics would be the, the best way for us to go to uh, again to best present the theme of the game that we're looking for, which is, again is more than both adult Link and his, the world that uh, he inhabits. In talking about the Wind Waker quite a bit, Mr. Anuma uh, had spoken to the media and, and talked about some of the gameplay elements uh, that were, were realized by choosing that particular graphical style in the Wind Waker, um, ranging from this, the smooth fluidity of the animation to this very unified sense of the Zelda world. And so my question for Mr. Anuma this time is what kind of gameplay enhancements can we expect to see in the new Zelda game because of the change to the more realistic graphics? Well, yeah, as, as you mentioned, Bill, with the Wind Waker, we used um, the, the graphics to represent the, the type of gameplay we were looking for, and we used the graphics to further enhance the theme that we wanted the user to really have, and we think we were very successful with that. There was, you know, obviously in Wind Waker, Link was, was very energetic and the art style really enhanced that. Looking at more of a realistic graphic style, we are, uh, the, the play control is going to represent more of, of a realistic feel and I think that if the players pick up the game and, and play it, they will you know, realize that uh, the graphic style does enhance the gameplay and that what we're shooting for is you know, a, a nice marriage of the two. Now, of course, this is a, an ongoing process and we're still polishing this up and there are a lot of things that, that we're still working on and uh, the game will further incorporate. Is if Mr. Miyamoto agrees with Mr. Aonuma that there aren't enough of these realistic elements uh, in the game and if, if there is some improvement that he would like to make, you know, what particular areas would he like to see feel more realistic uh, in terms of the gameplay? <coughs> Obviously, um, the realistic graphics are something that's important for us to convey the type of story we're working on this time. But there's a difference between um, good graphics and a good interactive feeling. They're not necessarily the same thing. He thinks right now that the graphics style of the game is, is, is good. You know, we're looking, they're doing much better and they're their skills have become uh, much improved at creating realistic graphics, uh, you know, with this engine and whatnot. However, some of the, the, the when you're playing the game, so that I'm actually, you know, interacting with this world and with these characters, some of that still needs some work. So that's really where they want to 
Mr. Miyamoto wants to focus and uh, uh, continue to improve upon. Uh, his style of work is one of, you know, hands-on, continual, uh, I say metamorphosis, but a continual learning process. So as they're going, they hope to continue to improve again uh, to create more of a, a realistic, interactive feeling that will match the graphics <coughs> that he thinks they're on the right track of capturing. Uh, We've seen one dungeon, and, and my real question is, how many dungeons can we expect to be in Final Game? Well, you know, our, our theme here and our motivation is to, to create a game that really surpasses Ocarina of Time. So to put that in, in numbers uh, is, is not the only way to surpass it. Uh, obviously, we want to, our, our goal is to, again, create a game that surpasses Ocarina of Time, and we think that the, the number of dungeons and the, the, uh, the content of the dungeons will do that. My next question is, will you have that ready by the end of the year? <laughs> not the one I was going to Who wants to know why, why we're laughing? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what we're striving for, and that's what we're going to do. Well, it sounds to me like uh, there's a fully orchestrated Zelda theme song, and I'm curious what Mr. Kondo might be able to tell us about it. Full orchestra de Kondo. Yes, we did use a full orchestra, and our, our motivation and our, our reasoning for doing that was we knew that you know for this trailer we really wanted something that matched the the dynamic aspect of the trailer. We really wanted music that was impactful and dynamic. So that was our our main motivation. Go ahead and, and use a full orchestra to record the theme song. My next question then is: Was was the song composed then by Mr. Kondo's team and then also orchestrated by his team? Yes, the, um, uh, the music itself was composed by Mr. Kondo's sound team, and for the arranger, they actually employed the services of Michiro, Michiro, excuse me, Michiro Oshima, who is a, a rather famous arranger for the uh, soundtrack, and they were able to put together a, a team, an orchestra of a very talented professional musicians uh, to record music. Well, Mr. Miyamoto's comment that, with, that Ms. Oshima is a, was, is a fan of video games and that she was uh, happy to have the opportunity to, to work with us on this game, and Mr. Kondo said that yes, that is correct. So then, is this the, the very first time that you've worked with an orchestra before, Mr. Kondo? Yes, I never had the opportunity to record with a full orchestra before, so this was my first time to do that. He's recorded uh, full orchestral music for the trailer. What that will mean for the actual game when that comes out? Yeah, as far as using the full orchestra throughout the game, we're not going to be using it, uh, you know, from from beginning to end. But what we'd like to do is, is use it uh, in certain areas where we feel that uh, the music will enhance, you know, maybe some of the drama or some of the more impactful scenes. So we're going to use it uh, again uh, as a uh, enhancer rather than as a full game uh, music. Well. It's, it's, Mr. Alnuma's comment was uh, to the degree that he's fiscally responsible for us to do so. Uh, Mr. Nuno says he's, yeah, well, they're okay with that, so they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll have the backing, I guess. He obviously used orchestras in the past for other things, like you know, they've done uh, orchestra, or, orchestral versions of the Smash Brothers music and things like that, uh, but this is the first time they've uh, been able to do that with Delta. So then my question is, uh, are you, you're obviously working on the music for this, for Twilight Princess, are you also going to be working on some of the sound effects? And the answer is we're not responsible specifically for the sound effects, but as an overarching uh, job, he is the sound producer for the title. Well, we expect the game to be in surround sound as we've experienced here. Sound, what are you doing? The wind and the Dolby Pro Logic 2. Uh, well, as we did with uh, the Wind Waker, we'll uh, utilize Dolby Pro Logic and 5.1 Surround. That will be used in this game as well. Uh, so next, I'd like to move on to some of the visuals that we've seen. Uh, we we see at the very beginning of the trailer this black and white scene of what appears to be a castle, and I'm wondering if this is Hyrule Castle, and if so, you know what on, what in the world is going on in Hyrule? Yes, the scene that we saw at the beginning of the, of the trailer with the black and white castle is, is basically when we were watching the gameplay and we saw Link get sucked into that, that kind of black miasma, which we're calling the, the twilight, that takes place shortly thereafter. And yes, that is uh, Hyrule. And basically what you've seen is Hyrule uh, kind of uh, transformed by the twilight. So it's uh, we're turning it to twilight Hyrule.
So then my question is, uh, with this, this concept of there being kind of the normal world in this, this Twilight <coughs> Realm, does that mean that this game is going to have a similar uh, game mechanic to A Link to the Past or, or Metroid Prime 2 Echoes? Well, um, the whole idea of having these, these two different realms uh, has always been has been used in Zelda before, and uh, the mention of Metroid is uh, I think that maybe uh, they actually took some of our elements in the Mr. Mino and Metroid interrupted and said, yes, they copied us. And we said, we probably shouldn't say they copied us. Uh, they are using uh, the, the Twilight and the, I guess, the standard Hyrule as, as two different, well, not two different worlds, but two different areas that... Uh, uh, will exist in this game, and that is part of the uh, the gameplay. So, uh, Mr. Miyamoto is the, the Metroid producer, so he he has, I think, uh, the right to say whatever he would like. Um, <laughs> so then my question would be, given the, the setup of this world, uh, is this somehow where the, uh, the kind of portals that we've seen appearing in the trailer and also in the cutscene at the end of the town ハイラルをどんどんその uh, they they use those those portals to to travel uh, travel around and as Link once Link is able to if he defeats them he is able to use those portals as well. We see a character dressed in robes in the trailer. Uh, I was wondering if Mr. Alnuma could reveal to us who that character might be. Let's take them all. Yeah, well, it's, it's not something that we're actually trying to hide or keep secret. That that is oh, okay. so, so, uh, would, would Zelda then have some kind of uh, connection then to this Twilight world and what's going on in Hyrule? And, and is she also in some way connected to this transformation into a wolf? Um, the robe um, that she's wearing there is uh, is based on a traditional robe that is worn in Japan uh, uh, at, uh, at, say, funerals. So the reason that Zelda would be wearing this robe here is that she is unable to, she's basically powerless to stop the, the, this twilight from taking over um, Hyrule. And so she has clothed herself in this robe of mourning, per se. Um, and her, her inability, I guess, to, to save Hyrule at this point um, obviously has some connection to Link's transformation into the wolf. Um, we're not going to get into uh, the specifics of that, but yeah, she is definitely connected with wolves or with, with Link's transformation. Speaking of the, the transformation, we've seen the transformation of Link in the trailer, um, and I'm wondering how Link's transformation into the wolf is going to change the gameplay of the game, um, and what types of abilities Link might have as the wolf, uh, and, and how they'll play through the game in the forms. Uh, well, yes, when Link becomes the wolf, obviously he doesn't have a sword since he's not going to be able to wield it even if he did have it. So um, he obviously is going to have some different abilities, and some of those are that he will be able to obviously talk with animals. Um, he will also have heightened senses, as we saw in the trailer. Um, he'll be able to see things that he probably normally, that he would not normally see. He saw those uh, spectral looking rats covering his body. Also his, his hearing will be uh, much improved and he'll be able to use these heightened animal senses to uh, solve puzzles and do things in the game that he would not normal, normally be able to do as a human uh, Link. Also when we saw him in wolf form attacking the enemies, uh, his attacks as a wolf are, are all going to be uh, heavily influenced by the character that was riding on his back. Speaking of the character on his back, who and, and what is that character? Well, the character, her name has been decided. Her character, The character's name is Midna, and she is a resident of this Twilight Realm. Um, when Wolf becomes a Link, you know, she, she sees him and she has her own agenda and things that she has to do within her realm in a series of, you know, uh, she has her own, again, her own motivation and her own goals, and she uh, sees that uh, the Wolf Link would uh, be able to help her accomplish uh, her own goals. So, um, by helping him, she helps herself, so there's a, they develop this cooperative relationship. Uh, so I've asked everybody if maybe, you know, if there was something that they would like to say to kind of wrap up, maybe a focus on the change uh, from the real to the realistic graphics uh, and the more realistic themes, and, and maybe if there are any elements they did not get to talk about that they would like to touch on before we move on to more.
But Kong Kai. With this Zelda, the change in the in the graphics and the gameplay style, they've also really wanted to concentrate on uh, creating music and sound effects that uh, that enhance that and complement that change in graphic style. In Wind Waker, of course, the the music and the sound effects really complemented and enhanced the, the visual style of that game in, in its sort of uh, cartoonish animated. So this time they're really trying to go out of their way to make sure that, again, the, the music and the sound effects enhance and complement the, the change in graphic style. And he uh, hopes that uh, you will enjoy what they come up with. Well, um, earlier I spoke about you know the past year of working on this title and how that Mr. Miyamoto came in and again uh, turned the tea table over on them. The main comment that he had at that point was that Link animations were were, were uh, almost doll-like or maybe puppet-like, and that's something that I think sees in a lot of games where those animations are not as as fluid and smooth as we'd like, and so. They've really concentrated on that, and things are getting—they're getting much better. They're getting uh, a good feeling from the way the game looks right now, and the way the game feels. And uh, as the director, uh, he's, he's uh, really excited about moving forward with the with the development, and uh, want to continue to create uh, better and better uh, animations and whatnot, so that uh, we build a game that uh, fulfills all of the users' expectations. But, you know, the thing with Zelda is we want the, the, the user to feel like they're really um, inhabiting the world of Zelda, that they are, that they're actually physically there and they have that feeling of, that they're in control and whatnot. And they really want to do that even more so with the player, that they become the hero, that they, they are dynamic and that they are cool. I mean, the things that they are doing, that they are actually doing. So that's what their, their goal is and they're working hard at that. I'd like to ask Mr. Kondo about his time at Nintendo and, and what he's been involved with. Um, and he's been with Nintendo since 1986. And so I'm curious, you know, he's been in EAD that entire time, and I'm curious what it's like to, to work with Mr. Miyamoto so closely. Since you just earlier, he didn't uh, stand up and acknowledge that I think the jet lag is kind of numb to the senses of it. <laughs> yes, um, as you mentioned, I started in 1986, which was the time of the NES system. And I uh, basically worked on the Mario series in the games involved in that Mario 3, uh, Super Mario World, with Mr. Miyamoto and uh, Mr. Tezuka. And in uh, working with them on these original Mario games, I, I was able to uh, maybe steal a little bit of their uh, knowledge and know-how as, as far as how to create games and uh, understanding of, of game creation comes from. <laughs> and as uh, Mr. Alan Newman mentioned earlier, the, the, the tea table reference that we so often use, uh, he is a picture. Kono says that he's had the tea table turned over on him uh, more times than he can remember. <laughs> And, and not to, to overstate that, as in the projects are being completely derailed or anything like that, but as you know, through the process of creating the game, you know, presenting stuff to Mr. Miyamoto or having him come in and see things and, and playing it together, some of that comes from that end and some from uh, Mr. Kono-san himself, just thinking, wow, this isn't as fun as we had hoped, and so they start again and, or they, they revamp things. Well, because so many of, of Mr. Miyamoto's games that have come to market have been such huge successes, then have you, in that experience, felt that... Uh, you know, afterwards, kind of sat back and realized, well, I guess, I guess Mr. Miyamoto really was right in, in upending the teacher all this time. And of course, his answer with no hesitation was yes. <laughs> of course. Um, <coughs> and that's Mr. Miyamoto has said, that's because I, I help clean up. You know, I not only make, make a mess and, and throw things around, I also help clean up. Um, so you mean, uh, you know, throughout the course of his 20 years, he feels that... Uh, it, it, it has been a good experience. No, wait, it is a good experience because I'm not quitting, so I can't think of it. Yes, yes. So, yes, it, it is and continues to be a good experience. So, then talking about uh, you know, this in relation to Mario Kart, I'm curious how, uh, you know, how is it that the, all the development time he spent with Mr. Miyamoto and all of the upended tea tables have resulted in, in this series that has been so overwhelmingly popular? <laughs> talking about the DS, he thinks that if uh, fans of the, of the Mario Kart series will be will be pleased with what they've managed to put together for the DS. And um, as far as courses are concerned, what they've done is go ahead and taken some of the courses from previous uh, incarnations, you know, from the SNES, from the GameCube, and they've taken the courses that were that were the most popular, had the most unique characteristics, and they put them into this game. Uh, in addition to, of course, a whole slew of original DS courses, and if you look at the volume of courses, this this newest version that's coming out will have the most courses of, uh, of any of the Mario Kart series. 
して一番多いというぐらいのものになっています。
With Nintendogs, we, we really feel that we've come up with a soft piece of software that fully realizes and is a good match for DS functionality. And uh, we, we would have liked to have gotten it to you sooner, but we, we really are pleased with the software that we have, and uh, we hope that you appreciate it and that you enjoy it. Mario Kart or So um, Mario Kart, Nintendo, uh, obviously these are games, you know, uh, both of them that we feel uh, appeal to uh, gamers of all ages, and there's games that the uh, entire families can enjoy together, and we, we think that's very important. And Mr. Miyamoto's house, they have uh, actually they have three dogs, one for Mr. Miyamoto himself, his wife has a dog, and his son has a dog, and they're, they're all going about different ways of, within the game, uh, uh, earning money so that they can uh, uh, further uh, uh, spoil their dogs, you know, buy them food and buy them treats and whatnot. Uh, and then he's also been told, uh, I guess, to, you know, to feed the dog uh, from other members of his family. Make sure you feed the dogs. <laughs> and he really thinks that uh, with this software, that it's become a yes, become something that everyone can use and everyone can play with, and that's the direction they want to continue moving towards. And they've already started in Japan. There's software that uh, I guess to sharpen your brain. There are some, some more educational software out there as well. Is that the test to test the age of your brain. So there, there's some, I guess, some things that you can do that will tell you that hey, your brain is 65 years older, or older or younger, or whatnot. He said, yes, and I finally become, I finally reached my 20s. <laughs> so we just really like you to, to look forward to the types of software to bring out. So uh, moving on to uh, an explanation of what you're going to be seeing on the show floor, if we could bring up the E3 show floor version of Zelda, that would be great. Uh, Nate Bildorf from Nintendo of America's localization group is going to be playing the game for us. Um, and I think as people go to the show floor, they will they will notice there that there's going to be four different areas to the playable version: uh, a town area, a mounted horse battle area, a dungeon area, and then a uh, there will be a boss battle at the end of that. So we're starting off here in the town, uh, and so we're going uh, so my question is, uh, <laughs> my question then is, you know, Link starts this game off as a cowboy, and uh, and I'm curious, why is it that Link is a cowboy in the game? Oh,まあこれから出てきますが。あのこのままあの。<laughs> <laughs> シリーズですとエポナと言いますけれども、あの、今回はこの馬にちゃんと名前を自分で決められるような形にしますけれども。だからあの、お金の時は途中から馬とパートナーになるっていう形ですが、今回はもう最初からあの、自分のパートナーの
、うん、っていうらしいですけど、なんかシェパードって言っても、一般的に日本ではわからないので、<笑>いわゆる開発用語ですよ、<笑>カウボーイっていうのは。<笑> okay, so, um... Yeah, he's not really the, the Eastwood. He's not really even a cowboy, actually. He's more of a, a sheep. He's, oh, wait, no, they're goats. So, a more of a, say, a goat、uh, shepherd. But, however, most Japanese people don't understand the word shepherd. So, for their for development team, they use the word cowboy, which is a more familiar term. Although, he's more of a shepherd than an actual Western style cowboy. <laughs> でここはあの、まあ、ストーリー的にこれがあのゲームの初段階っていうことですかで村の人々たちはあのリンクとどのような関係がありますでしょうか、はい、so,、uh, so my question then is what we're seeing here are some scenes from the town、um, and obviously it looks like、uh, you know I'm asking you is this, is this the initial stages of the game that we're seeing Lincoln here and what kind of relationship does he have with the various people in town? あのまあこれえっとゲーム進めていくと、この,あの村が、まあ、いわゆるあのゼルダのよくシリーズに続いているハイラルとどういう関係にあるかみたいなことは分かる形になってますが、ハイラルからちょっと離れたところにある、えー、村です。リンクはだからハイラルとは関係ない場所で、えーとそのえー、カーボイとして育ってっていう形で、これからこの冒頭のこの村から出発してですね、ハイラルに向かうというそういうあの設定になっています。Yeah, this,、um, well, as I know, The Legend of Zelda is, is based in the, in the land of Hyrule. What he wanted to do was kind of set Link apart from that in the game, so he created this village that is a little bit、uh, distant from Hyrule. And it's not that he's not going to go there, they actually start out with him in the village, kind of、uh, set up his identity as this, this shepherd, this ranch hand, and、uh, the game starts with him getting ready to travel to Hyrule. ああそれではということはあの今回のリンクはオカリナのリンクとかタップのリンクではなくて別のリンクになってますでしょうかはい新しい、uh, so then, so in this game、uh, Link then would he would be a different Link from the Link we saw in Ocarina of Time or in the Wind Waker あの新しいリンクです Yes he's a new Link であのストーリー的にはあのトワイライトプリンセスはどこに入りますでしょうか And in terms of the overall Zelda storyline, where does the Twilight Princess fall in? I mean, it's your Ocarina no, eh, Sujune, eh, Apo, Grand Sept, eh, Tima. So, this is,、um, as far as time frame goes, chronologically speaking, will take place a few decades after the Ocarina of Time. Tikoto, I know, Ocarina to Tacto no, I don't need Hide Masco. So, would that fall between Ocarina and Wind Waker then? Yes. Ja, no, Kai wa, eh, to, Link ga, ano, tada no, ano, yagi, yagi, shepard, t i k a k a w a i de, i m a s k e mo, ano, so yu, yu, sha, no, tabi, ni, te, ni, So, then my,、uh, my next question is well, you know, we have Link here. He started to get off in town as a cowboy or, or kind of this goat shepherd. How does he end up falling in line and becoming, you know, setting off on this journey to become the hero? あのちょっとまあ、えー、とプレイラブにもそういうあのイメージのシーンがちゃんとあるんですけども、あのデート君、これもあの、剣やめて。森の方行っちゃってください。Mate, stop playing with your sword and head to the forest. <laughs> There is a scene that will kind of give us an idea of, of how Link、uh, starts on his journey to become a hero. プレイラブのこのとある村の最後のエンドシーンに、えー、そのリンクは冒険に出ていくための、えー、きっかけみたいなのが表現されています。もう一人女の子が幼なじみの女の子がいるんですけれどもそれがいわゆる魔物に触られてしまうというこれあのまあタクトの時あの風のタクトの時もですねあの自分の妹がさらわれるっていうような話でスタートしてそれとまあちょっと似通った感じではあるんですけれども、えー、そういうあの、えー、きっかけというものになってます。<笑> Uh, what we're going to see here is that、uh, one of Link's friends here, there's this character here, and there's also a, a young girl that's、uh, in, from the same village. And what we're going to see is the scene where that、uh, the child is actually kidnapped. Now, this is kind of reminiscent of Wind Waker, where Link's sister was, was kidnapped. But this will be、uh, this is what our prime motivation for Link to, to set out is. 
。でこれはあのコリンとイリアっていうキャラクターですね。はい、そうです。The boy's name is Colin and the girl's name is Ilya. でさっきのシーンではあの動物は結構あのリストカーとかいろいろ回ってましたね。で、リンクも肩をさっき使っていろいろやってましたね。今回は動物のテーマが結構強いみたいですね。これはリンプあの今回の椅子のバージョンではいろいろ見られますね。で、これからどのようなあのあのどのようにそれがゲームを勉強されるか。Uh, so, then in this, we, we saw in this last scene here a, a number of squirrels and birds.、Uh, we saw Link using the hawk earlier. And so, it's looking to me like animals are going to play a very strong role in the game. And I'm wondering if we're going to be able to see much of that in the E3 version and, and if we'll be able to see what direction that goes in. であのさっきトレーラーと今のシーンではあのコリンが棒に吊らされて<笑>誘拐されてますけれどもこれは結構素敵なシーンでゼルダらしいって思いますか<笑> So, my question for him is you know, we've seen the, the scene in the trailer and also right here where we see、uh, Colin having been roped up、uh, on this, this pole by these war riders. And, and that's a very dramatic and kind of intense scene. And I'm wondering if they think that that's,、uh, that's a very a Zelda like thing or if we can expect to see more scenes like this throughout the game. I don't know. 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 I don't
、まあ、この子供を早く助けてやらなきゃいけないっていう気持ちをユーザーに強く与えたいのためにこういう表現を使ってますけど、まあ、ことさらにそういうことをあのどんどん入れていかなきゃいけないと思って、ね、あんまり思ってはいないんですこれは流れの中で自然にこういうのになっているということです。Um, and if that is the case, I'm, I'm curious what kind of elements in the horseback riding are they,、uh, are they focusing on, and, and what kind of things can we expect to see in, in the horseback battles? あのここはあの今あのビルクが言ったように、えー、いわゆる広大なハイラル平原の一部ですねあのこれが全部ではないですある一部の,あのところで、えー、ゲームの全体からするとこ,のこれの例えば5つ分ぐらいのこうハイラル平原としてつながっているとかそんな感じになってくるんですけど、えー、シナリオ的にはその中でこういう地場線っていう形あの、えー、馬に乗ってですね馬に。まあ、まあ、じゃないですけど、あの、よし、乗った、あの、適当に戦うっていう形ですよね。これ、あの、敵をやっつけるとわかると思うんですが、こう、タンデムで乗ってる、あの、えー、敵が落ちてですね、えー、で、こう、落ちた後もですね、そこにちゃんと自分が乗って、乗らないと、その、や、えー、イノシシが走らないようにできてたりとか、あの、実際自分がそこ降りて、それを見たりすると、そういう細かなことをやってるんですけど、まあ、ずっと走り続けてたらあんまりわかんないですが、そういう細かいことをすごく、あの、入れてますね。Well,、um, yeah, well we, the answer to the first part of that question is that it was just one small area of, of Hyrule Field or the Hyrule Overworld.、Um, so, and again, it's supposed to help you understand the scale of the world.、Uh, as far as all the, the horseback riding,、um, if you just continue running, as we, we saw here, we're not going to be able to see some of the smaller things, but there's a lot of、uh, interesting AI and a lot of interesting collision where, you know,、uh, if one of the riders is not about the boards, will stop. Uh, he'll stop running and wait for the rider, or if Link gets off his、uh, horse and looks around, he'll see a lot of the interaction between the boars and,、uh, and the riders and how they react to him and, and to what he's doing. The other thing is that I'm going to talk about the boats and the boats. I'm going to talk about the boats and the boats. I'm going to talk about the boats and the boats. So, my question then is、uh, it looks to me like what we're seeing here is a, a, a battle against the,、uh, the boss who is kidnapped Colin、um, and strung him up on the pole. And I'm wondering if, if this scene is going to take place immediately after the town scene that we saw、uh, in the beginning,、uh, and then also if there are going to be more of these mounted battles、uh, throughout the game, mounted boss battles. あのこの、えっと、騎馬戦、騎馬戦は一騎打ちのこのシーンはですね、ゲームの流れからいくと中盤ぐらいですかね、あのまあ、最初ではないです、あのトラウマからいきなりこれになるわけでは決してなくて、あのコリンという男の子はさらわれちゃって、でリンがその間に落として、やっと発見してこう、それを助け出そうとするという流れですよね。で、まあ、騎馬戦に限らず、その馬を使った遊びっていうのは、あのもっといろいろ入れていく予定です、ね。まあ、実際入ってますし、あ,の、まあ、あんまり例え話すると、<笑>ネタが分かってしまうので<笑>あの、今までやってないことをバンバンやっていってますので、期待してください。<笑>
Uh, as far as the horseback elements, there are a lot of horseback elements in the game. They're not just uh, combat on horseback, but a lot of new elements that we haven't seen before. Don't want to reveal any of those, you know, right, too much of that right now, so I'd just like to look forward to the idea that you're going to be on horseback for uh, a lot of the game, and there are a lot of interesting things to do. Yeah, the other thing is that there are a lot of different items that are used. So Link will be able to use a variety of his items on horseback? そうですね、あのえー、と馬の上で使って無理のないものは全て使えるようにしてあの今のシーンは単純なシーンなんですけれどもあの今回の,あの、まあ、送りのようにそ,のそれぞれのダンジョンではテーマはありますでしょうか<笑>あ So then my question is, we're seeing some dungeon scenes here, and what I'm wondering is if uh, each of the dungeons is going to have a particular theme to it, much like we saw in the time. Well, of course, the theme is one of the themes that we have set up. Today, we're going to show you that the dungeon is going to help you to help you. The dungeon is going to help you 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 to help you. でまあ、あとは自然な環境のいわゆるダンジョンであると。Yes,、um, there will be themes for the dungeons. The one we're looking at right now is, is based upon、uh, assisting or aiding these, these monkeys that you see within the game.、Um, and there will be other ones. I mean, obviously, each, each time will have a different theme, and be, some of them will be based on the environment, some will be based on、uh, the conditions like this. で、あのダンジョンでどういうアサリがあるかっていうと、やはりあの。剣のバトルが結構多いんですね。で、今回のあのトワイライトプリンセスがもともとタットのエンジンを使って、あのそれに一発アウトしてちょっとパワーアップしたエンジンを使っていると思いますけれども、あのコンバット上であのバトル上でどのような要素をキープしたか、どのような要素を追追加しているか、そしてリアルの表現でそれがどうやって変わっていくか。Um, so, since we're, we're in the dungeon and talking about dungeons, I thought maybe、uh, we could talk a little bit about the, the battle system in the game,、uh, particularly the sword combat.、Um, the game, as Mr. Al Newman said in the past, does use an enhanced version of the Wind Waker engine. And I'm curious as to what kind of enhancements they've made, what elements from the Wind Waker engine they've decided to keep, and then how they've changed that engine based on the switch to more realistic graphics. <laughs> あのウィンドウェイカーの時に、えー、いわゆるコンボみたいなものが決まると、えー、敵に対して特別な攻撃ができるようになるみたいなものを入れていきますけれども<笑>あのもちろん今回もそういったものをもっと強化して、えー、プ,レプレイヤーの,その、えー、敵に対しての攻撃の仕方によってさまざまな新しいアクションを繰り出すようなそういうものをやりますただねあのタクトもエンジンをそのまま使ってという話が出てましたけどもう全く違うエンジンで。<笑>きっかけとしてはそういうものを使ってますけれども、もうそれだけはリアルな表現が全然できないってことになってるんで、もうそこのところの何て言うでしょう、あの変更みたいなのがものすごい時間がかかってしまってますね。はい。The, the combo system and what we've done with it for this game is, is increased it and, and made it more,、uh, again, depending on what combo the per, what player uses when they find the, the enemy, they're going to see a, a you know, whole new actions、uh, that we haven't seen from Link in the, in the, in the past. And、uh, although we, we, we've mentioned in the past that this is running on the Wind Waker engine, it's actually, you've had to do so many improvements and so many changes to it that really it's, it's actually a brand new engine. It's, it's not, not even the same engine. Um, uh, again, to do all of this realistic graphics and、uh, for all of the,、uh, the combination and the fighting systems that、uh, are required <laughs> for this, react for this、uh, realistic, realistic graphic representation, the engine was、uh, optimized to such a degree that we really can't even call it the same engine. <laughs> であのここで、えー、とリンクがブームラインを使っていってると思いますけれどもあの今回のブームラインは何か新しい要素は入っているみたいですね。それについて So、uh, we see that Link is,、uh, is using the boomerang here and I'm curious、uh, it looks like the boomerang has a, a new element to it as Link could perhaps explain that a little bit. あのこう見ていただくと分かるように竜巻のような発生しているあのこれ日本名で疾風の文化なんて呼んでますけれどもあの
、まあ、ブーメランってのは過去からずっとリングのアイテムとしてあってですね、同じブーメランまた持ってもなっていうことがあのやっぱりあるわけですよ。あの今までと違うブーメランにしたいっていうの形でじゃあどういうことをやってみたら面白いだろうかっていうあのずっとシリーズやっていくとですねどうしてもまたあのこういうアイテムが欲しいよねみたいに同じようなアイテムが出てくるんですけど今回同じような使い方はなるべくせずにあの違うことをどんどん入れていこうっていうふうにやっぱ思ってますのでそういうアイテムがあの多数出てくることを期待してください。Well, I'm sure, as you can see,、uh, this boomerang, when Link throws it, it、uh, causes, produces these small whirlwinds. And,、uh, and, and the name for this that we've given it is the, is the Gale Boomerang.、Um, it's, you know, it's an item that Link's always had, and we wanted to use it again because it's, you know, it's familiar, but we also wanted to revise it to allow for a new gameplay and a, you know, a sense of、uh, a newness and freshness. And we've done that、uh, throughout the game. We, you're going to see some familiar items, but what we try to do. Is, is give them new usages so that、uh, while they are familiar, they're, they're, they, they feel new, and again, they're going to have some different and unique usages this game, and we're going to be、uh, putting those and increasing those throughout the game, and we, we hope you look forward to that. I think you will be, I don't think you'll be disappointed with those. So, are there going to be all new items as well? Yes, of course. でそういえばあのアイテム選択メニューも変わったんじゃないですかそれについてちょっと説明していただけますか And I've also noticed that、uh, you've actually changed the item selection menu in the game、uh, from what we've seen in all the past on the game. So I was wondering if maybe we could take a look at that and if you could、uh, talk about it a little bit. あのまあ、別にそんなにすごい特殊なことをやってるわけではなくて、えー、こういう、えー、とアイテムをです、ね、円形に並べてそこをこう選べるような形にしてるんですけどなんでこういう形にしてるかというとゼルダって今まであのずっとシリーズでこう数が最初から決まってるアイテムの,その、えー、と格納する場所にです、ね、こういくつかどんどん溜まっていくとあ,あと2つぐらい残ってて2つもあの手に入れたらもう終わりなのかみたいなことになってくるっていうのはもやっぱり。最初から数を決めてやるの嫌だなっていう形で、円形だったらまあどんどん増やすこともできるし、えー、増やしてあの増やすぎてあの困ったりするようなこともないわけですから、そういうようなことに対応するためにああいうあのものを使ってますけど、あとあの簡単にそのすべてのアイテムにアクセスできる手法としてもこれが一番いいだろうということでこういうものを採用,採用しています。Sure, well, as you can see, we haven't done anything exactly you know, spectacular with the menu screen, but what we've done is, is you know, put it in this, in this circle format.、Um, you know, throughout the Zelda series, we've always had、uh, the menu. You could see exactly how many items were going to be. You could see their placement on the menu screen. So as the player was going through the game, they could say, Oh, I've got four items left to find, or I've got three or two, or whatnot. And we, we really didn't want to give the player that information. We wanted them to you know, have more of a,、uh, a feeling of. Oh, I wonder what I have, how many items are left. So, in order to do that, if we, you know, we decided if we put it in a circle, there, you're not going to, you can increase that number、uh, as much as you want without you know, giving away how many items are. Of course, we're not going to do it so much that you, you know, it clutters the screen or makes it difficult、uh, to see. So, there's no worries there. And、um, another of the main、uh, motivations for doing this is that we wanted all the items to be accessible through a very easy、uh, menu system. So, when you pull that up, you're on, you know, you've got the one. One page, it's right there, everything's、uh, at your fingertips. The other thing is that 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 So,、uh, what we see here is,、uh, is what, what ends up being the boss battle for this dungeon. And I was wondering if maybe we could have Mr. Miyamoto explain to us how the boomerang is going to function,、uh, both in this battle and in, in the game in general. Well, you know, the, the boomerang, it's the, it's the same boomerang we've been using since the first game. And, and as we go through the series, the boomerang、uh, gains new abilities, and obviously, with this game, we've given it、uh, a new power.
いい感じのものに仕上がってきたと思います。However, you know, adding、uh, a new functionality to the boomerang, we didn't want it to become more difficult to use. That's one thing we really wanted to avoid. And through a you know, pretty rigorous trial and error process, we think we, we feel we've finally come up with one that,、uh, that feels nice. えしてくれないと難しいというところで、今度はいろんなアイデアが。割と自分で使ってる感じがする仕上がり。これは,これは今手前のプラブラしてるお猿にロックオンしてで次ボスにロックオンしてで真空のブーメランとかっていうとカフラを運んでいく。シップを使うことであるものを取ってきてどっかに運んでそれから、えー、と風邪を使って他のイベントをしていろんなことができる。So, um, in other areas of the game, we'll be using again the boomerang. You should see the boomerang here, the, the gale boomerang. You'll use that、uh, twister, that whirlwind to, to carry items、uh, here and there. And you will also,、uh, because it is a wind related boomerang, you'll be able to use the wind power for, for other gameplay as well. あとね、あの好きなところにこうロックオンできるんですよね。何もないところにどんどんどんどん。You can lock on, you know, whatever you want. It's not just there aren't areas that are lock on, lock on it. You can pretty much lock on to anything in the game. それを使って面白い。And there are some interesting、uh, events or some interesting gameplay elements that, that take advantage of that. ネイトっていうのが頑張ってますから、頑張ってみましょうか。あの最後にあのまず宮本さんに聞いてみたいんですけれども、あのゼルダを作った人間としてはやはりこのアイテムが出ないとゼルダの感じがちょっとなくなるなっていう。何かこのアイテムがないと困るな。So, my question then, my next question for Mr. Miyamoto is if there are particular items、uh, from the Zelda series that he kind of personally feels n e e d s to be in every Zelda game in order to, to kind of retain a consistent Zelda feel. Well,、uh, of course, the boomerang, and although it's not in every game, you know, the horse,、uh, to get that,、uh, that big, Zelda, big Zelda feeling, he feels the, the, the horse is a necessary, element, necessary item.